Hello everyone, welcome to Thursday Tea Time History Chat Live, first one for 2022. Welcome if you are new here, thank you so much for tuning in and welcome back if you have been here before. I hope you've all had a fabulous Christmas and New Year. Um, I don't personally feel ready to get going again, but there you go such is time, we can't stop it and uh, can't control it, unfortunately. So anyway, we're back. We're back for Thursday Tea Time Live. Welcome. Thank you all of you who are joining live um, and welcome also to any of you getting this on the catch up. We're streaming live on YouTube and Instagram. My name is Philippa and I'm here um, on British History. I also run a company called British History Tours and I have a Patreon called British History. So a lot of British history going on. And if you like British history, then you are in the right place. So also welcome any of you who are listening on the podcast. So if you are here live, thank you. Remember, you can pop questions in the comments um, and I will do my best to respond as I can. Good morning, Marion. Uh, thank you, Marion. Marion has indeed sent me some questions. She, she sent me them um, this morning by email. Um, Marion, there's a lot of questions and I am going to endeavour to answer them for you. Maybe not all today because I haven't had a chance to look at them properly yet. And uh, so who knows <laughs> whether I can actually answer them all or not. So I will get back to you. Um, so this week we're going to be looking at some of the anniversaries this week. Um, a couple of places that I managed to visit over Christmas and New Year. So Winchester Cathedral and Windsor Castle, I'll tell you a little bit more about. Um, yeah, this week's uh, anniversaries. So we have three that I can think of uh, off the top of my head. They're not really off the top of my head. It's because I did videos on them last year. Um We'll talk a little bit about those because I have also started, I've decided this year, hello Janice, how are you? Um, I've decided this year that I'm doing a little test. I'm going to test you each week, just a little for fun question, which uh, which I'm going to pose you each week. And hi Anne and Dita, welcome. Um, and uh, hello everyone on Instagram, thank you for joining. I'm going to set you a question each week just for fun which you can then go and find the answer to, and I will give you the answer in the following week. So that'll be fun, I think. <laughs> Marion, she's sending more questions. <laughs> okay, cool. Send me some more questions. I will look at them next week. <laughs> They're all on St. George's uh, Chapel, Windsor, at the moment, the ones I can see. Toe Caps, hi. Thank you for joining from Birmingham. Um, yes, please do pop comments in uh, uh, underneath, uh, whether you're on YouTube or on Instagram, because it does help. Um, I think it helps push out the video so that other people can see that we're live and we're, we're, we're doing our history stuff um, here. So that would be that would be fabulous. Thank you. So, so we'll look at three topics. We've got today the um, the wedding of Henry VIII and uh Anne of Cleves or Anna of Cleves. Um, this week we also have the funeral of Vice Admiral Nelson and we have an event which unless you watched my video last year you probably have never heard of and it's uh, it's quite a, um, a feel-good story. It's about a, a lifeboat rescue attempt which was launched and the the actual story behind how the lifeboat got launched is the big story. And that's uh, one of the things I'm going to ask you uh, was going to be the topic of my just a fun question this week. Uh, let me see. Mel, Mel, good morning. She's on her 8 a.m. coffee in Ontario. Cool. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. And I hope I'm waking you up to those of you who it's, a, it's morning for and and hopefully calming you down after whatever sort of day you've had if you are in the evening time because I know we have people who join us um, from uh, Australia and New Zealand and in detail I know you're over in India you were last time we spoke I think 
So I have my cup of tea. So I think I'm ready to rock. Before I get going, let me please give a quick shout out to um, new patrons. I hit my patron target, which is fabulous. Um, let me just block that spammy user who's just come up. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so three new patrons um, hit my Christmas target of pat patron numbers. So that was fabulous. And I'll let you know, actually, there's some stuff coming out um, and it is also available to other people. I'll explain a bit in a minute. So we have John who's joined the nobility tier. Thank you, John. John Sinclair, welcome. A couple of Sinclairs we have now. Lucrezia has joined as an upper class tier member and Rebecca has gone to the heady heights of the monarchy. She is straight up there. She's 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 a monarch. So you can choose whichever tier suits you um, in my Patreon. So um, please feel free to go and have a look, see if there's anything of interest. I am actually going to update the descriptions um, of each tier because I'm making a couple of changes. Uh, one of which will be to introduce for the uh, monarchy tier. I give a free um, dig digital product and I've decided to start coordinating myself a little bit better because I don't if you follow me on Instagram um, or Facebook you'll know that I take a lot of photographs of places that I have been to and some of them are some of them are rather good even if I do say so myself so I'm going to make those available to buy on my Teespring shop which um, uh, you can find a link to in my profile but if you are a um, a monarchy level patron you will get the monthly image free so there will be a new image each month and they will also only be available um, or some of them I'm going to make them uh, maybe only available for the month but anyway if you're on a monarchy tier you get them for free but I'm going to start making those images available to buy so, so that you can download them for your desktop that's that's how I imagine them if you want them on a t-shirt just let me know and I'll whack them on a t-shirt and you can order that or a mug what else is there? Pint glasses. Um, I can't remember what else there is. A right, face mask, if you really want another one of those. Um, I can stick an image on one of those for you. Just let me know because it doesn't take me very long and I can make it available. So before we um, get to our fun question, which I'm going to set you, it's a bit like homework, but more fun, hopefully, <laughs> then... Um, yeah, let, let's let me just get rid of, oops, no, I've pressed the wrong button. But anyway, so I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, but before I do, there's been a few people joined. So let me just remind you, this is, the, this is weekly. So I'm here every week streaming live on Instagram and YouTube for this history chat. We look at things that, uh, anniversaries that have come up, any history in the news, places that I've been to, I tell you all about, and also, this is not the only live event I do. This is the only one I do on my own uh, each week, but there are plenty of other live events going on as well, which I'm involved in. So I'll also let you know about those, what topics we're covering and things like that. So thank you so much for being here. First of all, thank you for supporting me. Please do do the heart thing on Instagram and say hi. And the um, right, this is what American YouTubers say, smash the like button but I feel way too British. Can you just, can you just press the thumbs up button for the video? That feels better. Um, because again, that helps other people see it. And my channels are growing really fast. So thank you so much because it's your support that helps me um, be seen by other people who enjoy their history as well. And I know a few of you, you see each other here each week as well and, and on other events that I do. So there's a little bit of a community as well building up. So that's um, that's lovely as well. So, but right, my question, um, before we get on to this week's um, anniversaries, Janice is loving being a patron. Thank you, Janice. I'm loving you being in there. Um, right, also on Instagram, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, on YouTube, on Instagram, sorry, I don't know how to do this, but on Instagram, I've put a poll in the comments, <laughs> which refers to a piece of news this week um, about Richard III and him being innocent, plainly, of killing the princes in the tower because uh, a tomb has been 
um, linked to Edward V, so the eldest of the princes in the tower who disappeared. And so I've put a poll in the comment section on YouTube to say, what did I actually write, ladies what, um, and gentlemen? What did I actually give you the options of? I basically said, is Henry, it's Henry? <laughs> Where the hell did Henry come from? Is, uh, is Richard innocent? I only gave yes or no. So Anna Dita is saying, is there a third option of I don't know? I'll take that. <laughs> Richard is quite a divisive character because you have, well, you have people who are very pro Richard and then people are like, nah, of course he could. Of course he could have arranged the disappearance of his main rivals for the throne. Of course he could. So anyway, there you go. But we'll we'll chat a little bit more about that story in a little while. I'll let you know what live events we've got going on. Like I said, um, I will talk to you about Winchester Cathedral and Windsor Castle because I visited both during the, the, um, the Christmas break. And we'll talk about this week's anniversary. So Henry VIII, marrying Anne of Cleves, the funeral of Admiral Nelson um, and uh, the Louise lifeboat. So I'm going to talk about the Louise lifeboat first because actually what I'm going to do is set you a question. There is a video on this rescue and it happened um, on the 12th of January is the, uh, is the anniversary. Um, and my question is how many miles did the um, Louise lifeboat have to be taken, dragged to its launch point at Poor Lock Weir? Because Basically, there'd been um, a flood where the lifeboat or the, the storms were just too too bad to launch the lifeboat where it was kept at a place called Lynmouth, and it had to be dragged from Lynmouth over to Porlock. Um, the full story is in the video, and in that video, you will find the answer to that question. How many miles did the Louisa lifeboat have to be dragged in order to reach its launch point at Poor Lock Weir. But it's an incredible story because um, it took such effort. Lynmouth, um, it's a place that I, I know really well. I've been going since I was a child um, on holiday to that area. It's in a gorge. Um, so basically extremely steep to get out of. And then once, <laughs> toe caps too many, yeah, I think it was 18 horses that were used to uh, to pull this. You know, this this is. Um, I'm afraid I didn't uh, I didn't have time to to check my dates and everything, so I can't remember the year. But this is this is your you know your old fashioned uh, large wooden lifeboats, and it was taken from Lynmouth to Porlock to be launched, and um, yeah, 18 horses dragging it. Once they got to the top, so once you get out of Lynmouth, it's not just the you know the top of a hill and then and then you get to to Porlock. It that you've got hill and dip and hill and dip. So it's um, yeah, it was incredible. Uh, it's an incredible story. So do check out that video um, and answer that question. Don't answer it now because that means you'd have gone off and watched the video now. Well, unless you know, I'd be amazed. That would be quite a deep knowledge of um, quite a, a uh, it's very well known, obviously, in the area. It's a big sort of legend, but uh, but yes. And then I will give you the answer next week. You can. I'm going to give you a chance to to put the uh, the answer in the comments next week before I give you the answer, and I'll set you a new question next week. Um, Michael's here. Hi, welcome. Happy 2022 to you. Don't run his friend Richard down. Do you know what I'm amazed by? Oh, hi, Soledad. How are you? Happy New Year. Absolutely happy. Uh, good to see you too. What fascinates me about um, Richard, but you can apply this to other figures of history as well, is how passionate people are about what they may or may not have done and how how do we believe anyone is all good or all bad? 
I don't know anyone who has been all good or all bad. Um, I know people who've been portrayed to be all good or all bad. Um, but, you know, they're generally not. It's not the way human behaviour works. Um, so, yeah, so the thing with Richard is 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 quite fascinating in that aspect as well, just how, um, how passionate people are um about um about whether or not he did it did he kill the princes in the tower or arrange for them to be dispatched or <laughs> michael's 95 percent bad see not 100 percent bad though you proved my point um or another theory uh that uh, dr cat talks about is this uh, the year they went missing, or the year they just disappeared, weren't seen again. A um, sweating sickness had broken out for the first time in London. Was it neglect? Generally, a royal household didn't stay in London at the outbreak of any of these diseases, the plague, sweating, sweating sickness, whatever. So, could it have been a neglect issue? Um, Anyway, so, but people are very passionate about it, whether or not it was Richard. Now, the the theory that's being put forward is that a tomb has been discovered uh, in, is it Devon? Someone remind me? Yeah, Devon, isn't it? Um, of a, uh, supposedly a man called, was it Paul Evans? I'm sorry, I've, I've looked at so many stories just before I've come on. And, um, and there's there's lots of different clues that indicate that this is actually the tomb of the oldest prince, the eldest son of Edward the Fourth, the nephews of Richard the um, Third, and that this is in fact Edward the Fifth's tomb. Um, now, what I would say, without having my own extensive knowledge on uh, heraldry or uh, sculpture at that time or how letters were depicted or uh, how churches were built, decorated, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is this report, one, it's been jumped on. So I'm not clear whether it was meant to be published yet. So whether it's actually out in its entirety, whether it's actually been uh, in the, the investigation has been completed. Um but it's been jumped on by numerous news news outlets. Um, the level of journalism, I have to say, generally is shocking. Um, so what's happened is someone's, I don't know which which paper had it first, and then others have just regurgitated it. So, so don't think because it's being covered in lots of different places that there's any extra credence to it, because no one else would have looked at it in any detail, I guarantee um michael says david starkey has blown it out of the water indeed now the way david starkey has blown it out of the water is because he can take each part of the evidence and explain why that would be in situ um and therefore how come actually this is a lot of on the face of it logical and circum uh, but circumstantial evidence and how when it's pieced together it can be used to tell particular story but in fact when you pick it apart it is quite easily disproved sorry anyone who was hoping uh that it was actually the tomb of edward v it would be bizarre if we think about it it would require richard iii to send actually and what happened to the other one i don't i don't know if anyone's mentioned the other one what happened to the duke of york what happened to, uh, to to Richard? But Edward, so it's, we're supposed to believe that Edward went to uh, live on the estates of his uh, half uncle. Is that right? Yeah. So, um, and uh, so of, of um, was it Walter de Grey? I can't remember, sorry. But uh, of his half uncle anyway, and lived out his life till he was 41 and... Uh, made no issue no no 
no uh, no chatter, no uprisings, nothing. Um, if Richard had survived the Battle of Bosworth, perhaps there would be a little bit more, that would be a little bit more believable. However, this would also require Henry VII to also agree that Edward could live out his life quietly as a park manager, whatever they called them, um, in Devon. And we talked about this in the History After Dark room last night, which I will come on to talk to you about that, because um, we've got some changes happening there. Um, Devon is not a huge amount of time away from London, and there were uprisings during Henry VII's reign. It's so unlikely that if he knew of the actual Edward V, that he would be... Um, allowed to just be sitting out in Devon and how he was never the focus of an uprising and yet gets to the point of death and leaves this breadcrumb trail for Dan Brown-esque fans to put together five, six hundred years later. It's really quite uh, unlikely. But anyway, I will recommend to you that you check out David Starkey Talks on YouTube and listen to his video about it because it's interesting the way he does it. I really like the way he does it. So he presents the case as it is being presented by the, I think it's the Richard III Society. Um, oh, Michael, when he died, he went to Devon. <laughs> um, little nice pun joke there, Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, Totally, totally got me off my stride there. Oh, yes, David David Starkey. So, yes, yeah, check out David Starkey Talks on YouTube. Look for his video because he presents, yes, yeah, so he presents the case as it is presented by, um, by this report. So you can see how it is really compelling. And then he picks it apart. And that's just, just interesting for the fact that he, you, um, because he's been around this, you know, around history so long, the Tudor period particularly, when it comes to things like, uh, so that so in Evans, the N is supposedly missing. Well, it isn't missing, apparently, because the way that um, an N would be depicted, it's there. It's depicted there. It's, it's just different to how we expect it to be written down now. Um, yeah, so I would thoroughly recommend that you check out that video, um, even just to learn a little bit about heraldry, a bit about if you see an effigy in chainmail, what that might mean, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's some really just interesting points that he comes out with during that video. So I would recommend that. Um, we did talk about it in History After Dark last night. Now, if you like your history, um, raw uh you're not offended by some swearing or some sometimes questionable rabbit holes then uh you might like history after dark it's myself it's dr cat uh, marchant who does reading the past on youtube and uh catherine brooks who is not just the tudor tracker on instagram we do History After Dark every week at quarter past eight at night uh, on a Wednesday. It's all London time. And we have set up our own History After Dark profile on Instagram. So you don't need to worry about uh, working out which one of us is hosting each week. We will from now on always be on, uh, on our now newly dedicated profile. Now it's history.after.dark on Instagram. Apologies for the dots. Someone had already got it without the dots. Um, not that they're using it, but never mind. Actually, it's probably better that they're not using it. So please go and follow history.after.dark if, uh, if you love history and are not easily offended and like a good laugh of a Wednesday. We do have fun. We really do have fun. Uh, the podcast will also be launching soon. So um, some of the episodes that you might have missed from last year, they will be on there. And we will be recording all of them from now on. The caveat being that if we do manage to get down a maybe libelous 
Uh, rabbit hole, we may well not share it. Although, to be fair, I can edit it out. So that was probably more likely what would happen. And you'll still get the episode. So please do. Um, so follow on Instagram at history.after.dark. And I will share on there and probably everywhere else when the podcast for that is launched as well. But you can find us there, 8.15, every Wednesday evening from now on. Um, yeah, fun. And I'll, obviously I'll let you know when the when the podcast is launched. Now, Visit Tudor Britain is back this Friday. It's going to be myself and Sarah Morris, the Tudor Travel Guide. Deb will be back next week or the week after. And this week, Sarah and I are talking about our favourite cathedrals. <laughs> helped by the fact that I went and visited one over Christmas. In fact, um, as I said a little bit earlier, I managed to visit two places. So um, oh, before I move on, so Visit Tudor Britain will be on at British History Tours Instagram live at four o'clock on Friday. So please do join us. Um, like I said, we'll be talking about our favourite cathedrals. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen I have shared a, I can't remember, I shared two photos and a reel of West of inside Winchester Cathedral. Oh, I have I have shared a couple of photographs because I shared a photo of the stained glass window um, above the west door. That's got an interesting story behind it. So let me tell you, Winchester Cathedral. You may remember is the uh, what. Well, Winchester is the ancient capital of England. Uh, Winchester Castle is where the it's got a legendary link, a uh, link to the legend of um, uh, Arthur and the Round Table. There is a Round Table um, on the wall inside the only remaining part of Winchester Castle, the Great Hall. It's painted in green, uh, in the Tudor colours of green and white, um, and Obviously, it's a circular table, but there's a, there's a I'm going to say the head at the top is uh, a painting of Arthur. In I've got my teacup in one hand, so I can't do the whole inverted commas thing. Um, and it's supposed to be Arthur, but looks rather like Henry VIII, who had the table painted in the Tudor colours. So... Um, Janice says she loves visiting Tudor Britain virtually. Excellent. So the idea with with uh, you know visiting Tudor Britain is we tell you about Tudor places, um, uh, you know what the history of places, what you would like to see if you're there. Yes, Phil, you're late. You're marked. You're marked as late in the register. <laughs> it's fine. Welcome. Happy New Year. Um, so, uh, Michael, can I ask you a question? Is there such a document with the names of all the royalist soldiers who fought in the English Civil War? Ah. Hmm. I don't know, but I do know of one that you may well be interested in. Um, remind me in a moment. Let me come back to that. There's a Civil War link at Winchester Cathedral and the West Window, which was, which is where I started with this. <laughs> um, uh, so, yes, yeah, so a Winchester so you've got Winchester Castle, you have the legend of Arthur. It's that that legend is the reason that Henry VII made his heavily pregnant uh, wife, Elizabeth of York, uh, travel to Winchester so that their firstborn would be born at Winchester. Luckily, it was a boy. That's why he's called Arthur. Yada, 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 yeah. But the reason I was going to say, uh, but I don't know how come I went on to that. But anyway, Winchester Cathedral is also where... Mary the first married the future uh, Philip II of Spain. I got told off once for saying she married Philip II of Spain. Because, all right, technically he wasn't Philip II of Spain at the point he married it. I suppose it is quite, yeah, it is quite important, but it was also um, uh, easier because everyone knows who I'm talking about if I say that. So the West Window. During the English Civil Wars, Winchester was... Uh, was ransacked by the parliamentarian forces, so Cromwell's forces. Um, they stood against privilege, they stood against idolatry, 
Um, so cathedrals were absolutely up for grabs. No problem at all. Tombs, desecrated, um, prized open to see if there were any lovely uh, grave goods in there that they could pilfer. And Winchester Cathedral, um, this happened to. Um, now, there are many uh, coffins of uh, pre-Norman Conquest kings at Winchester. These were prized open and the bones scattered. Not only scattered, but when they found that there weren't as many grave goods as they were hoping, thrown through the beautiful stained glass in the west window. Um, now the bones and the shards of glass were collected up by local people as well and as best as they possibly could, um, kept. And then on the restoration of the monarchy, 11, well, it would have been more than 11 years later, um, they decided, the, the community, local community decided that they would try and reinstate the window um, and bring back the bones. So the bones, um, um, I'll probably share, I'll share some more photographs of it. So the, the these little, um, I want to call them coffins, they're not boxes, ornamental boxes. Um, Doug, they stood against fun. Yes, they certainly did. Those Puritans. Have you noticed there's a few of them around now? They're back. They're back. Maybe they never went away. Um, yeah, so there's these, these um, boxes that are up on the screens around the high altar. Now, they contain what bones were recovered of the pre, um, so English, pre-Norman um, kings uh, and queens, actually. There's a queen in there as well. Uh, I can't remember in the names. I will share the photo and I'll tell you more. Um, and the stained glass. So so people had, people had apparently boxed up the glass. Anyway, they brought as much as they possibly could back, which is why... The west window is a mosaic. It's why when you look at it, you know, I can't pick anything out there that I would normally expect to see in a, in a west window of a cathedral. And that's why. It's because it was smashed. Um, the glass picked up as good as could be, by uh, collected up as by local people and, uh, and reinstated well over a decade later, maybe about 15 years later. So, um, so yeah, Winchester Cathedral is fabulous. That's just the west window. There's a 12th century font in there. Um, Winchester is also the site where St. Swithin, St. Swithin of the uh, um, 40 days and nights raining or dry fame. Um, I'll come back to him in a minute. And Anita, we know Shakespeare is a person who wrote tragedies, comedies, he had written many historical plays. Do you think historians find it authentic? Uh, whether Shakespeare's history is authentic. That's interesting. I think he does give really good clues. Um, you always have to remember the context in which Shakespeare is writing, who he is performing for. Um, so there will be exaggeration in there. Um, against the in inverted commas, commas em enemies of the ruling person. So whether it was Elizabeth or James, um, but I, but I do think he gives really good clues as to some of the history as well. Um, thank you, Anandita, for that question. Since with him, since with him, uh, was Bishop of Winchester. Um, I did an interview with Cassidy Cash. Actually, she's uh, that Shakespeare girl, or I think she does Shakespeare Life uh, now. And uh, we were talking about Swithin. There's actually two St. Swithins, but this is the um, the more famous St. Swithin, the, the Bishop of Winchester. He was buried outside of the old cathedral. Um, he wanted the rain to fall on him. He wanted people's... Uh, people to walk over him in life he was very um 
well, he, well, he, he, how do I put it? He, he wasn't a hierarchical sort of idea. He, you know, if he put on a banquet, it was for the poor. Um, he wasn't into kind of the, the trappings of getting higher up in the church, etc. Sort of, you know, keeping to the values really um, of, of, uh, of the church that he had joined. Um, now he was moved later on when the new cathedral was built and he had a, um, uh, a shrine, well, so, yeah, so a shrine built with his uh, relics, basically his remains. Now, these were originally behind the high altar and you can still see, now I know I'm not doing history after dark here, but I can't say this without it being a little bit of a giggle, right? There's a, huh, there's a holy hole. Oh, I got, I got really posh there as well. Oh, holy hole behind the high altar. And um, again, oh no, I, sh I shared this with my patrons because if you're in my Patreon, it's well worth it because I share lots, lots more in there. I know you think, how much more can you possibly tell us? Well, lots actually. <laughs> anyway, there's a holy hole uh, behind the high altar, you can still see. And the idea was the pilgrims could um, get closer to uh, to St. Switham, to the shrine, to his his relics. Um, they would have to crawl. The, the, the hole is normal person width. But anyway, they, they would have to go there. In the 14th century, I believe, a marble um, shrine was built to him uh, a little bit further back, so not directly behind the high altar. That is the shrine that was destroyed uh, in, I think it's 1538, by, uh, well, on the orders of Henry VIII. Now, on that site now is the 1960s, um, I wouldn't even call it a shrine. I don't know what it's supposed to be. But it indicates where that shrine to St. Swithin had once stood before the Reformation, before idolatrous idolatrous practices were no longer allowed um it's also got quite an expanse in that same area of medieval tiles floor tiles so when you're walking it walking around um winchester especially that area you are on um <laughs> you are on um yeah the medieval floor same as all those pilgrims who came to see St. Swithin's shrine you are walking on the same pavement. Um, there's also the Chapel to the Holy Sepulchre, which is also 12th century, I believe. Uh, I'm saying that, I'm trying to remember, but uh, with, with intact wall paintings, mainly intact wall paintings. Oh. So Winchester Cathedral, well worth a visit. If, um, if, you, if you're coming over or you want a hand, um, I, I put together people's itineraries, um, and uh, and as, as well as doing uh, in-person tours so if you ever need help just let me know um get rid of another spam agent down here cool and the other place i managed to go but were not allowed to take any photos much to my chagrin was uh windsor castle and the queen was there um if any of you were following my instagram over christmas and new year you'll have seen um i put a video of the royal standard flying above the uh, the round tower at Windsor. That means that the Queen was in residence because she didn't do her normal Christmas uh, trip this year. So um, so in the castle, um, the reason I wanted to go was because they have huge Christmas trees <laughs> and I wanted to feel Christmassy for as long as possible. So um, it's well worth a visit if you get a chance to go to Windsor Castle in the Christmas time. Hello, hi, um, Amakrain, Shakib. <laughs> um, but also, of course, Windsor Castle has St George's Chapel. See, I'm getting warm now. It's got to put the heater on and then and then turn the and then shut the door. Now, now I'm getting warm. Um, now, Marion has asked me a whole heap of questions about St. George's. So I'm going to come back to St. George's next week um, and tell you more about it. Um, there are, of course, 
uh oh tara's in in windsor right now tara are you getting to go to the um are you getting to go to the castle while you're there so i went i went into st george's like i say you're not allowed to take photographs either in the castle or in st george's um which is a shame i don't know if that's all the time um but as i don't have any photos of anything other than the outside i'm imagining that it is all the time otherwise i would have done in the past st george's chapel is where henry the eighth is buried of course charles the first um uh, henry's buried with jane seymour and i've done a whole video for that thing i've done two about why he's there uh in other words why has he never been moved from this temporary grave and also i look into why he's buried with Jane. Um, hello, Perseverance 1501. Hoping to get to London in March. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, it'll start be starting to have our longer days and um, a little bit milder weather. So um, that'd be good. And before the crowds get here. So that will be a great time to come. Um, yes, yeah, so we've done a video about, um, about why he's buried with Jane because it's presumed um the shorthand that oh, he's buried with Jane because he loved it the most which I I think is a inevitability when someone's had six wives it's the wives who get compared to each other well and ranked when you get to six who did he love the most um is 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 the uh is the is one of the obvious sort of comparisons that are made I don't think he necessarily loved her the most um why because he gave she gave him a son yeah i know lots of people who've had children together i'm not it doesn't guarantee undying love <laughs> um but the logic is the logic is basically there the the Catherine of aragon the marriage was annulled so she wasn't his wife uh and she's already buried in in uh in peterborough uh welcome orlando from rio in brazil um Anne Boleyn, obviously, was beheaded as a traitor. There was, and the marriage was annulled. Jane had given him a son, and they had been uh, legally married, lawfully married. Not saying the others weren't, but anyway, in Henry's eyes, Catherine Howard had been um, executed as a traitor. Anne of Cleves and Catherine Parr are still alive when he dies, so he can't be buried with them, can he? So anyway, that's just my. <laughs> there's a quick run through of why the, there's just logic behind it. Um, Mel, Jane was the only one still married to him at her death. Anne and Catherine, yeah, exactly, are in the tower. Catherine of Aragon was considered, a, uh, well, Catherine, um, I think you mean um, Anne of Cleves was considered a sister. Yeah. Well, yeah, so they, they'd been divorced. Um, yeah, so now. I have just released today to patrons a blog, this month's blog. So whatever level of patron patronage you are, you get the, the monthly blog. And this month it's on the divorce petition that Henry VIII um, and his counsellors sent to Pope Clement VII. Um, and I've done a whole blog on that because I actually went to Rome to, um, to, to see it um in it's tw uh, 10 years ago I couldn't believe it when I looked at the date in order to write the blog 10 years ago Meg um that makes sense I always thought because of Jane providing the sort after son but your explanation makes sense thank you thank you thank you that's just the way my brain works I maybe I, I'm not sentimental you may well find this when we're talking about anything <laughs> I'm, I'm more the logic queen um but yeah so there we go that that's my take on it um, but yes, yeah, so this this divorce petition, I'm saying I'm not sentimental. I went to Rome. It's 1,300 miles away. I know for you that in America, you'll be like, do that in a day. <laughs> That's my commute. Um, but I went all the way to Rome. I decided as well, I'm going on my own because there's this document. Now, the divorce petition is held in the Vatican archives, um, which you can't, although I do know of someone who has managed to go but generally you can't see stuff that's in the archives now they were doing a uh, a very special exhibition and they in their own words um a once ever maybe exhibition where they bring they brought out um 
particular documents. Now, there, there were things like there was um, a letter from Mary, Queen of Scots, uh, to her brother-in-law, the King of France, pleading with uh, him to intercede um, before her execution. There was a letter from Mary, Mary Antoinette. There were um, documents referring to the proceedings of the um, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the trial of Bruno of Galileo. And then there's the divorce petition. And that's why I travelled all that way to go and see the divorce petition in uh, real life. Uh, Hampton Court Tour Guide. Hi, looking forward to seeing you in May. Um, Catherine of Aragon was probably considered his sister as technically, was she, yeah, she was still his sister-in-law as Princess of Wales. Well, indeed, the, he can't have been buried with her because by that point, technically, whether we agree with it or not, legally, they weren't married. Um Orlando, I'm always searching for details about how Catherine Parr is seen by Brit historians. Um, well, I would recommend um, there are quite a few books about the six wives. I know Alison Weir's got one. David Stark has definitely got a very good one. Um, yeah, she's, uh, yeah, they'd be the two I'd, I'd start with. Um, so the divorce petition. Anyway, so yes, so that, the patrons, head over to Patreon after that, you, after this, after that, after this, and you can see the blog. So this document, um, it's three foot wide parchment, obviously, um, and it has all the signatures on, including George Berlin is there. I can't remember who else is there. And underneath there are, I don't know how many ribbons, the 81 uh, seals in like in skip it so these these little tins and they all hang off uh about eight or ten red ribbons that come uh, from the bottom of of the parchment so they the these there's the signatories and then their seals are underneath as well attached to the document and that went off to pope clement the seventh um anyway so yeah so i traveled all the way to rome 10 years ago just to see that um such was my geekness even then. I didn't I manage to go on my own, by the way. I decided I was going to go on my own because I was going to go and see it regardless. And then my dad decided he wanted to come. And then my sister said, well, I couldn't leave the hair out. So we all went. <laughs> so it's quite nice. It's quite nice. Um, quite a nice little trip out. Um, forgot all my Italian that I'd learned, of course, other than how to ask for a bowl. That was very useful one morning when the cereal was there and no bowls. Um, yeah. Every time I go to a foreign country, I remember a different language. Not that I'm fluent in any, but it means I always have to revert to English. Goodness knows why. Obviously, my brain isn't wired for languages, although I am trying. I am trying. I am a part of the Duolingo gang now, doing my German, German mainly, uh, Italian, because I really, 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 really need to do that if I'm going to do it any day, Latin and uh, Irish Gaelic, but they're really tough. So, oh. so um, welcome anyone who's who's just been joining us. We've, 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 we've covered a lot already. I've been talking about the Richard III story. I know, Joanne, I think you were with us yesterday when we were talking about that. Talked about Winchester Cathedral. Um, I started talking about St George's and I got way late with Henry VIII and his divorce petition. Um, Jenna, wasn't it found underneath an old oak chair by a university student, the divorce decree? That is, um, yeah, well, the, so the divorce, yeah, it was not the decree. It was um, this petition with, with this lightly veiled threat to the Pope. Um, oh, Meg's doing French and a bit of Spanish and Latin would be fun. I think, just think Latin would be so useful. Do you know, even um, Samuel Johnson's... Um, it's not his tomb, it's his, uh, well, his tomb might be in Latin, but he's got a statue in St. Paul's and that's in Latin. And it's in Latin because I believe that would be the perpetual language. Ich mach seit einiger Zeit durch in Duo. Oh, well done, you're also doing, um, Barbara's doing uh, German. Um, so, the, um, yes, Jenna, so the this, this um, uh, divorce petition was only found, I think, in... Is it 1920s, 1926, something like that? Really recent. And it so and it was, yes, it was in a uh, a casket under a chair. 
So just goes to show all this stuff still out there to be found. Um, but back to St. George's. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so obviously you've got the grave of, uh, of Henry VIII in one vault. I know uh, Marion was asking about the other vaults. Now, I I know there's two at least. Um the one Henry's in, and then there's a there's a, a much bigger, better built one as well, um, which is where um, Philip now rests, um, and the Georgians, I think. Um, but the Princess Charlotte um, tomb, and I don't know. I Marion asks. I'm going to have to look at whether her remains are actually in it. It's so moving i know i've spoken about it before so this is in um st george's chapel as well and princess charlotte i've done a video on her um please check that out if you want to know more about her um, in fact i think i've done two who she was and then about her death with princess charlotte's death she gave uh, she gave birth to a stillborn son and died shortly after that was two generations um gone the only legitimate line gone so this is george the third's um granddaughter charlotte was um by the prince regent and between george the third's children did he have five i can't remember there was rafts of illegitimate children but only um only charlotte was the the, the only legitimate grandchild and uh, when she died, uh, following the, the this this um, unfortunate stillbirth, um, there was a a crisis, a succession crisis, which led to a bizarre um, quick marriages and baby race in this rather unhealthy family. To be fair, you know. The, the, the drug addiction and the and the alcohol addiction is not great for procreation um but duke of kent won the race uh with victoria so that is how come we even have uh victoria born is because charlotte died and her tomb at the back of st george's chapel um is is huge and it's beautiful um it's white i'm presuming marble and there is it's, it's she, she's lying on a bed and there's um there's a cloth over her and um there's mourners also sheathed and then she's actually then depicted going up to heaven and an angel is carrying the baby up to heaven as well it's really really moving um marion also asked about um the queen's closet um, Catherine of Aragon's closet. Now, I have asked about Catherine of Aragon's closet. So, as you're looking at the uh, the altar, to if you were looking at, straight at the altar, to the left is what's known as Catherine of Aragon's closet. Now, it has so it's an oriel window, basically dark wood, um, and the Queen would have sat up there, uh, and it's got paintings on it with Tudor emblems and the pomegranate. Now, I did ask and they didn't have an answer for me, the, the room guide that, uh, that was there, but the pomegranate, I just, it can't, it must have been put back. I can't see that it would have been left there. If you remember when Henry VIII, uh, when Henry VIII got rid of a wife, he wanted her gone. She, he wanted her memory gone her badges gone and in somewhere like St George's Chapel which is fairly small I just can't believe that he would have tolerated the pomegranate being up there so um I will do my best Marion to find the answer but I um I have actually asked uh, that particular question and didn't didn't get much of, a, of an answer so I will see if I can if I can find out any more um so just as a uh, reminder, because I've started this new thing, uh, I want you between now and next week to have a look at my video about the Louisa lifeboat rescue and answer the question. Um, 
it's this week's question for fun. You can find out, tell me next week, and then I'll tell you if you're right or not. And it's how many miles did the Louisa lifeboat have to be dragged to get to its launch point? So I'll put a, um, a, a, a link to the video. The link to the video is already, I think, in YouTube comments, um, and I'll do it for Instagram as well. Meg, um, with her still being Dowager Princess of Wales, would it have been right for him to rid all of her badges? Um, it's in such a prominent position, and it is the Queen's closet in um, St George's Chapel that I, I mean, because some, some do still exist in stonework at places like Hampton Court Palace, but this is painted on. And I just, I, I don't know. I can't see that he would leave it up um, in such a prominent position on the Queen's closet um, when it could have been so easily painted over. I might be wrong. But, but remember, the Victorians were very nostalgic for history. So it just wouldn't surprise me if it was put back, if it was painted on there and, and probably named Catherine of Aragon's closet by them. Um, so I'm not doing any new YouTube videos other than the Thursday Tea Time Lives on a weekly basis. Every month, though, there is a going to be a, a longer form documentary or historian interview gone really red look how <laughs> yeah yeah uh, it's because I'm getting warm um so this month is the Tracy Borman interview um so that would be that's really good we talk about um well her new book Crown and Scepter but specifically about um female monarchy um and that's so it's really interesting patrons got a chance to ask tracy their own questions so that will be available to patrons um um and then everyone else can watch the rest of it um but there's but so although they're the little bit although they they're the only new videos so the, the the monthly sort of documentary and these weekly chats uh obviously you've got all of the ones from last year so each week i thought if i just remind you which anniversaries are coming up and then if you've seen the video about it that's cool um but if you're interested you can go and find it so obviously we have the louisa lifeboat rescue um that's on the 12th but the video is there now um the funeral of admiral nelson which uh, the anniversary of which is on the 9th um and today is the anniversary of henry the eighth um marrying anna of cleves anna anna Anne of cleves um now i have also interviewed Heather Darcy, who's written a book um, about um, about th th their meeting and and the whole situation around the marriage of Henry VIII and, and Anna of Cleves. Now, from the British accounts, we've always been led to believe, and I, I feel like I could do with updating my video now, because we've always been led to believe that this initial meeting between um, Anna, uh, Anna or Anne and Henry was so catastrophically bad their first ever meeting that the marriage was doomed so he um he surprised her uh when he when she got to england um i, I can't remember where she was staying i'm afraid um and he goes in disguise he kisses her and she rebukes his advances which this story always irked me a little bit because I thought, well, you know, even if even if the customs at the time are, um, you know, the 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 true identity of one's uh, the, the identity of one's true love should just be blatantly obvious to you. Um, I just couldn't believe that it was so much of a faux pas that it actually leads to Henry deciding he doesn't like uh, Anne that he wants to get out of the marriage super quick, but he doesn't want to get into it at all. And that once once the marriage ceremony has happened, he wants to get out of it super quick. And yet then he gives her a really uh, generous settlement, welcomes her back to court, and to all intents and purposes, gets on with her very well. Calls her his sister, seems to quite adore being in her company, 
and she has uh, ideas that perhaps he will remarry her after Catherine Howard is executed. Now, the interview with Heather explains a lot about why this, well, how come this doesn't make any sense? So anyway, that interview will be out in February, but you can also um, uh, read Heather's book. I will put a link to it uh, on my website, which is BritishHistoryTours.com, so that you can have a look at the arguments yourself. And then what she did was go back to, uh, she went to primary sources in Cleves. So she had a look at the German account. And there's also um, this, the political situation in Europe which Cromwell, bizarrely, doesn't seem to understand from what Heather's uh, uncovered, which is incredible because he's sort of a man with his uh, finger on the pulse, you'd have thought. Um, and we go into that as well. Um, oh, Jenna listens to Heather. Yes, uh, listens to Heather in her um, in her uh, reading rooms on on Clubhouse. Talks about on a quite often. It's fascinating what she uncovered. Um, and like I say, so the political situation um, uh, in Europe was such that Henry being married to Anna or Anne, I don't know how you, I don't want to confuse people by just suddenly calling her something different, um, would have meant that, so being, being married to her would have put Henry on a side or the other. Um, and it was a very, very tense very dangerous situation in Europe at the time, so much so that the ladies in waiting who came over with Anna had to get home to Cleves as soon as possible because it was a powder keg. Nobody knew when it was going to blow. And yet Cromwell seems to be, have been quite ignorant of the situation, possibly because the um, ambassador to which court was it, Jenna, you might be able to remember, was Thomas Wyatt who, of course, Cromwell had had um, in the Tower during uh, Anne, Anne Boleyn's downfall. So there's no love loss there. So anyway, that's quite that's quite fascinating. So, so my interview with Heather will be coming out in February, so you should enjoy that. Um, live events for this week. So tomorrow you can join me at four o'clock on Instagram. There's myself and... Sarah Morris from uh, who's at the Tudor Travel Guide. Deb will be back with us from Tudor Time. She will be back with us um, next week. Um, Jenna, I was at, <laughs> she's at work listening to me. Jenna, I was wondering if you remembered who Thomas Wyatt was, which court Thomas Wyatt was ambassador to, because I believe that he was informing Henry of this political situation in Europe and missing out Cromwell. I remember Cromwell came uh, unstuck after the Anne of Cleves uh, divorce and, and issues. Um, so, yeah, I was just wondering if you remembered which course it was. Um, so, remember, if you're a patron, head over. You can read the blog about uh, Henry VIII's divorce petition to uh, that was sent to Pope Clement VII. Um, bad timing Henry as well bad bad timing we've done a video not a video we did a clubhouse with um, Bia Landini who is a tour guide in Tuscany she's basically me but Italian and much taller and she gave us the Italian perspective and basically Henry was like an annoying gnat <laughs> this is my summary not Bia's um, an annoying gnat just buzzing around Clement's head when he had much bigger problems um, and much bigger uh, people like Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, to keep on side. Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, nephew to Catherine of Aragon. So anyway, go if you're a patron, go and read my blog. If you're not a patron, consider it. Uh, I would love to see you there. I do do extra bonuses. I'm going to update the Patreon website to really explain what you do get there because I've uh, it's sort of 
it's it's morphed a little bit um you get a bit more than i have made plain on the website so um anyway love to see you there why not you can also sign up to uh to my free newsletter um if you go to britishhistorytours.com you will find a sign up there to the newsletter i send that out weekly and it's got links to all the different things that I've been up to and I'm about to get up to, um, including things like the Instagram Live from today and the Visit to the Britain Room, which will be tomorrow. If you weren't here when I mentioned History After Dark, uh, but you like your history a little bit spicy sometimes, then you can follow the new History After Dark profile, which is history.after.dark, apologies for the dots, um, and the podcast will be being launched really soon as well. So all the details of that will also be in the newsletter. So basically the newsletter is really good because it's uh, it's once a week roundup of everything that has been happening so that you can pick up what you want. Um, so most people who have it... Um, open it so that's quite good <laughs> I think they enjoy it therefore so join me then um and uh oh who's that Jenna he was ambassador to Charles V well there you go there you go there you go that makes sense um cool so thank you for joining me everybody um I've loved having your company this is the first one back in 2022 we've managed over an hour together so I hope I've had a, made a good start to your day or end to your day or lunchtime or when you're supposed to be working. <laughs> um, you can catch me same time next week, streaming on YouTube and Instagram. If you're watching on the catch up and you can make a live one day, please do because you can pop comments in uh, and questions. Um, Make sure you subscribe to me, please. Hit the like button uh, if you're on Instagram. Morning, Louis, in New Jersey. Um, and if you are able, willing, and wish to, please do consider joining my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash British History. Or you, do you know what? You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Philippa. Simples. Um, but for now, I wish you all a fabulous rest of, rest of your day. And I will see you all very soon. If you are around tomorrow and want to visit you, the Britain with myself and Sarah, we'll be back at four o'clock tomorrow. And we follow up after that with a clubhouse room at five. So thank you so much for joining. I will see you all very soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. <laughs>